Now let's look at the lineage of mammals that gave rise to humans, and those are the primates. We've seen, even with the earliest placental mammal, that that climbed trees. What we now want to focus on is the fact that our lineage occupied a very complex habitat, a three-dimensional habitat. All of our ancestors were up in the trees, and this three-dimensional habitat is a very important selective factor favoring larger brains, as we'll see. The earliest primate fossil dates from 55 million years ago, an arboreal species, that is a species that climbed in trees, it was very small, only about four inches long, with a tail that was another five inches. And if we look at the classification of the primates, the closest relatives to the primates here are tree shrews, bats, flying lemurs. All of these things occupied the trees, so they're all arboreal. That's very key to our background. Now, let's look at the modern primates, and what I want to focus on in this part of the lecture is biogeography, a concept that we looked at very early in the course. And what I want to do now in going through these four main lineages of modern primates, the prosimians, the new world monkeys, the old world monkeys, and apes and humans, is to focus on where they are on the surface of the earth. Because as we've seen, the history of geology has a lot to say about the history of lineages that we see. So the earliest fossil primates date from about 55 million years ago, descended from tree shrews that were around about 68 million years ago. And the earliest of this group would appear to be the prosimians. These date from about 40 to 45 million years ago. And the key thing here is that this all originated down in this part of Africa and Madagascar. So here we have the modern prosimians, they're found only in Africa and in Madagascar. The African prosimians include the galago or bush baby, also tarsiers. And on the island of Madagascar, which separated off from the African continent tens of millions of years ago, we have the lemurs, ring-tailed lemurs, also sifakas and indries. Now these are all characterized, at least these prosimians up here, are characterized by very large eyes and they're mostly nocturnal. Now, the next major group in the primate phylogeny are the New World monkeys. South America was at one stage connected with Africa, but then they split off. Somehow, some monkeys made it from Africa over to the New World, and the New World lineages then diversified. And we have a whole series of monkeys that are found in South America and Central America. So owl monkeys, squirrel monkeys, Cebus, spider monkeys, and this weird thing, wakari. Now, to know a New World monkey, one of the ways you can recognize them quite easily is these are the only monkeys that have prehensile tails. That tail can function almost like a fifth hand, so when they're moving through the trees, they can grab onto things with their tail, and then also grab things with each hand and foot. The other way to tell a New World monkey, if you want to impress your friends, is that they have a funny shape in their nostrils. So their nostrils point sideways instead of forwards. So these are all monkeys that originated and live exclusively in South America and Central America. Now, back in the Old World, in Africa and Asia, we have more monkeys. These are the Old World monkeys. These include things like colobus, colobus monkeys, mandrels, hamadryas, and then Asia also has its monkeys, proboscis monkeys, langurs, and Japanese monkeys. Now, the oldest of these monkeys are found in fossils dating from about 37 million years ago, found in Egypt. So, we've had Africa and Madagascar for the prosimians, the New World monkeys, only found in South America, Central America, then the Old World monkeys, which are in Africa and Asia. The last group we want to look at here are the apes, also found in Africa and Asia. The earliest apes are found in fossils. These are found in East Africa, dating from about 25 million years ago. This is called Ruquapithecus. And from this, then we have the modern apes that include gibbons, the lesser apes, and the great apes, which include gorillas, chimps, and orangutans. So, let's just look at the great apes here. And the fossils that we're going to start with then are Ruquapithecus from about 25 million years ago. This is in Africa. 
But then there were early fossils that were also found in Asia, another unpronounceable name, this one from Asia, and this dates from about 17 million years ago. And then from this descends the modern orangutan. So the orangutan are only found in Asia, and they separated off from the rest of the great apes quite some time ago. Another species that was found in Asia but is no longer with us, Gigantopithecus, an amazing thing that was nearly 12 feet tall. And this was only found in Asia. And sadly, for people who'd like to see really amazing animals, they went extinct about 200,000 years ago, but they lived in Asia for nearly 8 million years. Now, some people would like to say that they didn't ever go extinct, that in fact, stories of the abominable snowman or the Yeti that we hear many stories of from Tibet, the Tibetan Plateau, and even stories of Bigfoot, Sasquatch, from the northwestern part of the U.S. And these may actually have been descendants of Gigantopithecus that somehow escaped extinction. And I always thought that would be a, a great thing to find if somebody could actually capture one of these animals and see if it really was perhaps a Gigantopithecus. Unfortunately, DNA has been collected. And, well, fortunately for science, now we have an answer as to what the Yeti likely was. And it turns out it was a bear. So, alas, Gigantopithecus did well and truly go extinct tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of years ago. And the strange footprints that are associated with the abominable snowman in Tibet are likely a special kind of hybrid polar bear that still may live in very small numbers in Asia. Well, that's all in Asia. Now let's go back to Africa. And we have the African great apes. And there are important species here, the gorilla, the chimpanzee, familiar species. And then more recently, people have recognized another kind of chimp called the bonobo. The bonobo has created a lot of excitement in the last few years because they tend to walk bipedally much more than the common chimpanzee does. It's also excited a lot of people that their mating practices are more familiar to human societies than to chimps. They tend to have sex ventral ventral, and they often seem to do this recreationally rather than just purely procreationally. But genetics show it's not the bonobo, it's the, actually the chimpanzee, the common chimpanzee, who's a close living relative of modern humans. And we'll continue more on this in the next lecture.